Seven, the heights. Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad. Letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean. But it is reported Ibn Abbas said it could be a message from God saying, I know best and I am best. God is the Almighty. This is Quran sent to you, Muhammad, through the angel Gabriel. Do not doubt this Quran's source. It has been given to you so you can give good news to believers, and so the disbelievers can be warned. Follow what has been sent from God. Do not follow other masters than him. Indeed, you should take heed and consider how many towns we have destroyed for doing such a thing. Our punishment came on some while they slept, and to some it came in the middle of the afternoon. And all they said when it came is, We were wrong. Indeed, for them, punishment was due. We shall question the people to whom messengers were sent, and the messengers too. We will ask them whether the message was delivered, and we are fully aware of all things all people do. We shall explain and remind in detail all they did, and we shall place their beliefs and deeds on the scales, and the weighing of things shall be true and just. God will count all of the small and large details. Those whose scale of good deeds is filled and heavy will be victorious. They will have gardens of delight. But woe to those who rejected our messages. Because of this, their scales will surely be light. We gave mankind the earth and provided them with a means of livelihood on there. Yet such small thanks and praise you give to God, who provided for you, the one who is all aware. When we created the first mankind, Adam, and shaped him, we said to the angels, bow in greeting. They were all in the realm of God, along with Iblis, a jinn, and all but Iblis did as God commanded. He was of the jinn, and they had been given free choice to obey or disobey. He had been a loyal servant to God, and he was rewarded in the best of ways. He was given a place in the heavenly company, as he had been a righteous servant to God indeed. But once there in the company of the angels, he figured himself better and more deserving, and acted arrogantly. He did not bow with the others, and God said, What stopped you from doing as I commanded you to? Iblis said, I am better than Adam, I am made from fire, he's formed from clay. And God said, Leave here. This is no place for you. But Iblis begged, Lord, give me respite, until the day when mankind are raised from their graves. And God said, So be it, you will have respite, until the appointed time of judgment day. Iblis said, Because you have made my arrogance wrong, I will lie in wait for all of Adam's children indeed. I will come at them from the front, the back, the left and right, with lies through a whole host of ways, and you will find many will be ungrateful to you, and will follow me. God said, Leave here, you are banished. I promise to fill hell with you and those who follow you. But Adam, you and your wife stay in the garden. Eat what you like, but the fruit of this tree is not to be consumed. But Iblis, now the enemy, named Satan, whispered lies to Adam and Eve, and caused them to remove their robes of light, and their nakedness to be revealed. As he said, eat from the tree and you will become angels, immortal. I am giving you advice with sincerity. He tricked them with his lies, and once they ate and disobeyed, their nakedness was revealed to them, at which point they realized their sin, and tried to cover themselves with leaves from the garden. And God spoke to them, saying, Did I not forbid you to eat from that tree, and show you Iblis's blatant enmity? They said, God, we have wronged our souls. We will be lost if you do not forgive us and have mercy. God said, All of you leave this blessed place. You are enemies to each other. I will place you on earth for a time. There you will have a livelihood for a while, there you will live, and there you will die. And from earth I will resurrect you and your children, and bring you all back to me. And children of Adam, 
I have given you garments to cover you, so cover as God decrees. This is one of God's signs to mankind, so that people may take heed. The best of garments is that of God consciousness. It is best to cover yourselves with it indeed. Children of Adam, do not let your enemy Satan seduce you, as he beguiled your parents, Adam and Eve, before you, causing them to lose what they were covered with of consciousness and robes, and exposing their nakedness too. Satan and his forces are at work though you cannot see them, and the evil ones work with those who disbelieve, such as those who say, we simply follow what our forefathers did, when they commit an indecency. They also say, God has commanded us to do this. Say, prophet, God does not command evil deeds. How can you say something about God when you have no knowledge? God commands you to act righteously. Direct your worship to him alone. From wherever you stand to pray, devote your way of life to him, just as he created you the first time, you will all be raised and returned to him again. Some of mankind has been guided by him, and some have been left to stray, and the latter have taken evil masters and followed them, and think they are following the right way. Children of Adam, cover yourselves properly when you pray and worship, eat and drink, as we have shown and allowed you to. Do not be wasteful with what God has given. God does not like those ungrateful people. Prophet, some of the disbelievers have banned themselves from certain things when they go on pilgrimage. Say, Meccans, who commanded you to abstain from food and clothes God provides for his servants? The idolaters used to go on the pilgrimage naked and forbid themselves certain meat. Say, Prophet, in the hereafter food and clothing will only be of use to those who believe, but on earth God allows believers and non-believers to benefit from them. In this way God makes clear to people his commands and prohibitions. Say, Prophet, my Lord only forbids you that which is shameful and evil deeds that you do in private or secretly. Any such deed or act of oppression which you claim is from God, but do so baselessly. And he forbids you saying things of him which you know nothing of in any way. There is a time appointed for each group of people, and that time is not something they can delay. Children of Adam, when my messengers come from your people, bringing revelation to you, those who obey and fear God and keep him in mind need not fear or worry when the time of the hereafter is due. But those who reject what the messengers bring from our revelations, they will have the fire, and they will remain there forever. Such is the reward for those who speak of God but are liars. Who could be more wrong than a person who invents lies about God, or ignores what the messenger brings, when they simply bring God's revelations, good news, warning, commands and prohibitions from him? Such people will have what has been decreed. God has promised that for them punishment is due. And when the angels descend to take their souls, they ask, Where are the idols you used to call on? Why don't they come and help you? They will say, They have deserted us, and admit they were disbelievers and had no right to disbelieve. And God will say, now join the leagues of men and jinn who have gone before you into the hell, your home for eternity. In hell, every crowd curses the next crowd as they enter, and when they are all gathered inside, they will start to blame one another, saying, Lord, it was these people that led us astray, it was them who lied. So, Lord, give them an even worse punishment, double the torment due for them. God will respond, all of you will have double punishment, but you will not focus on that because of the severity of your own torment. And those who were being blamed, those who lived first on earth, will turn to those who came after and say, You are no better than us. You will be fully punished too for your going astray. The gates of paradise will not be open to those who rejected our revelations and arrogantly disregarded them until the thickest rope passes through the needle's eye, an impossibility, thus they are forbidden the garden. Such is the punishment for those who do evil. Hell will be their floor, their bed and covering. 
This is how the evildoers are rewarded, upon return to me again. But as for the ones who believe and do good deeds, we do not tax them with more than they can bear. They will have eternity in the garden, and will only have good things and pleasure there. We will have taken each negative illness from their hearts, and they will have flowing streams. And they'll say, Thanks be to God who guided us to this. All praise be to the Almighty. We would never have been able to find this on our own. What God's messengers brought was true. And they will be told while in the garden, This is the reward for belief and subsequent good you used to do. They will shout to the people of the fire, We now know what God promised is true. Have you found your situation to be the same? Are you being punished for disbelief and what you used to do? And the fire dwellers will cry, Yes! And a voice will be heard from the place in between heaven and hell. God's rejection is the evildoer's due. They turned from God and led others astray. They denied the hereafter, and now know the full extent of their sins well. There is a barrier that divides those of the paradise and those of hell. It is a wall called the heights. And those of mankind stand upon it, whose balance is even, after the tallying of wrongs and rights. They look to the garden, wishing to enter, and greet its inhabitants, saying, Peace be unto you. And when they look to the fire, they say to its inhabitants, May God keep us well away from you. What use were all those who followed you, and the pride which kept you from following what God decreed? Look to paradise, and see the fate of those you said would not have God's mercy. Do they not have the better end? And then to those on the heights it will be said, You may now enter the garden. You need not fear or grieve. You will have eternal delight instead. Those of the fire will call to those blessed with paradise. Give us water, or some of the good God's given to you. But the reply will come, What we have is forbidden to those who disbelieved and ignored God's messengers too. They are the ones who took religion for a game. They were deluded by the things they had on earth. And just as they ignored God's revelation and the reckoning, we have ignored them at the rebirth. The people of Mecca have been given this Qur'an, and in it we have outlined rewards and threats, and it is a guidance and mercy for those who believe and engage in the good deeds they know are best. Are the disbelievers waiting for something other than the day and reckoning God has promised them? On the day those who disbelieved will have faces that from woe are darkened. They'll lament, God's messenger did indeed speak the truth. Who can intercede for us in this calamity? Or is there an opportunity to go back to earth again and have the chance to act very differently? But it will be too late. They will have wasted their chance and their souls will be lost indeed. And all they invented as partners and helpers to God will have disowned them completely. God is your Lord who created the heavens and earth in six units of time, which God refers to as days indeed. But these days could count as a thousand years, or fifty thousand years, or something else of another realm entirely. After God created the heavens and earth, he positioned himself on the throne, in a way known only to him. It is he that makes night chase day. He created the sun, moon, and stars that he commands. He is the owner and creator of all creation. Praise be to him, the Lord of every world, realm, and dimension. Call on him in private with humility. He does not like those who transgress his bounds. Do not make corrupt what has been set up rightly. Call on God in fear and in hope, and remember him standing, sitting, or laying on your sides. God's mercy is near to those who believe and do good. Those who by his commands obey and abide. It is God who sends the winds that bring the good news of rain, and he who leads them over barren land. And when they are gathered together, he causes rain to fall too, and eventually bring up vegetation, all by his command. It is he who brings all kinds of fruit from the earth, and he who will bring the dead to life once more. Will you people not reflect on the similitudes God gives you, and prepare for the return to God in store? It is only with God's leave plenty of vegetation comes from the fertile earth indeed. 
and only by his leave too, does it come out of less fertile earth more scantily. In these ways we explain our revelations and signs to people so that they may take heed, and be warned and thus repent, before the day comes when you will stand before me. We sent Noah to his people, and he warned, My people serve God, you have no God other than him. I worry you will be punished on the terrible day, when there will be no refuge or excuse you can be offering. But the leaders of his people said, We see you are in error from the foolish things that you say. But Noah replied, My people, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. There is nothing about me astray. I have brought you my Lord's messengers and bring you sincere advice indeed. I know things from God unknown to you. What I warn and advise with you, you should heed. Why is it so strange in your opinion that God would send a messenger to you? from of your own people to give you warning before the punishment is due, giving you this message so that you have a chance of God's mercy. But they still called him a liar. So we saved Noah and the other believers on the ark, but dealt with those willfully blind to our revelations. They were punished in this life by drowning, and in the next life will have the fire. To the people of Ad we sent one of their people, Hud, and he said, my people serve God alone. You have no other God than him. Take heed to succeed and have the garden as your final home. But the leaders of his people did not believe and mocked him, saying, We think you a foolish liar indeed. But Hud said, My people, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. There is nothing foolish about me. I am simply delivering God's message to you, bringing you sincere and honest advice. Do you think it's strange God would send you a message from one of your own to highlight to you the gravity of your plight? I have come to warn. Remember how you were successors on earth after Noah's people and clan, and how God gave you abundance. So remember him to prosper with him and prosper on the land. They said, Are you really advising us to leave what our forefathers worshipped and serve God solely? If there is truth in what you say, then bring what you promise of punishment for us all to see. Hud responded, You have set yourselves up through disbelief to receive God's wrath and torment. They have been decreed for you. Are you going to claim your partner gods are valid without permission from God, or any scrap of evidence too? The names you give your idols are things your forefathers invented. They are not approved by the Lord. So wait for my destruction and I'll wait for yours then we'll see who is punished and who gets reward. We cut from the earth those who denied our revelations, those who were arrogant and would not believe. They are the ones who worship other than God, lead others astray, and spread corruption endlessly. To the people of Thamud, we went to their brother Salih, and he said to them, My people serve God alone. He is your one true Lord. It is to him you'll be returned again. The Thamud suffered a drought and prayed for its end from their idols, but the drought stayed the same, and then challenged Salia to pray to me to see if his prayers too would be in vain, and I immediately sent a she-camel out of the mountain, as was his people's request. But few believed, even after they witnessed this, so the camel for them became a test. Salia said, My people, this is God's she-camel. He has sent it as a sign for you. Do not harm her in any way, for those who disobey this, a terrible punishment will be due. Remember how he made you successors in this place, after the people of Ad, and gave you this land, and you carved homes in the mountains, and built forts on the earth. Be grateful for the blessing you have. Remember all that God has given you, and do not spread corruption on the earth. But the arrogant leaders ignored Salih's warning. They thought he and the other believers were of no worth. They ridiculed them, saying, Do you expect us to believe Salah is a message from God? And the believers said, Yes, we believe what was sent to him. But the leaders ridiculed the response and arrogantly added, We reject what you and Salih believe in. And one of the disbelievers hamstrung the camel, 
and thus they disobeyed what God had commanded them, and then said, Now, Saleh, if you really are the messenger of God, bring down the punishment which you threaten. So we sent an earthquake to them, and by the next morning they still lay in their homes, they were dead. And Saleh left, saying, My people, I delivered God's warning to you, but you preferred to follow your own desires instead. I brought you sincere advice, but you rejected those who brought what was sincere and true. And we sent Lot to preach to his people, and he said, How can you carry out this abomination that you do? You have sexual intercourse with men and ignore your women and lust after men. You transgress all bounds, and none has committed this heinous act before you from any of mankind or jinn. But all his townspeople said was, Get Lot and the believers out of this town. They wish you to be pure. And thus we destroyed the town and Lot's wife. She disbelieved. But we made Lot and the other believers safe and secure. We sent a rain of baked clay down on them, and they were destroyed. Reflect on what happened to them. And note too the story of what happened when we sent Shuaib to the people of Midian. He told them, My people, serve God. You have no other God but him. He has sent a sign to you. When people enter a sales transaction with you, be fair and just. Do not make their goods undervalued. Do not cause corruption in the land after things in it have been put right. This is better for you if you are believers. God brings you from the depth of darkness to the light. Do not lurk in the towns and threaten people or mug them, or turn them from God's way, or try to manipulate or lie about something God has commanded, trying to make others go astray. Remember how God has made your people grow in number, and consider the fate of sinners before you. If some believe in what I've brought and others do not, let us be patient and wait for God, the best of judges, to judge between our two groups. But the conceited, arrogant leader of his people said, Shuaib, we will expel you and your followers too, and ban you from our town, unless you desist and join us in worshipping idols, as our forefathers used to. Shuaib said, You think we'd ever join your idolatry? We hate it. God has saved us from what you do. And if after his grace we return to your ways, we would be lying about the Almighty by following you. We will never return to your ways unless God wills. He alone understands and knows everything. Lord, expose the truth between us and those who disbelieve. God is the best of judges. We put our faith in him. But the disbelieving leaders said to their people, Ignore Shuaib, you will surely be losers if you follow him. And the very next day they lay dead in their homes, as they were struck by an earthquake, a mighty trembling. It was as if those who ignored and mocked Shuaib had never lived in that town. They were the ones who were the losers, and from that place Shuaib turned around and said, my people, I delivered God's message to you, and gave you sincere truth and advice indeed. So why now should I grieve over a people who ruin themselves through their disbelief? We never sent a prophet to a town without sending some hardship too, so that they could see only God could remove their affliction, and thus submit humbly to God's truth. And then we removed that hardship, and made them prosper, and they grew arrogant, forgetting God's grace, and said, This kind of thing simply happens. Our forefathers too had some adversity they had to face. So we seized the people for their ingratitude and disbelief. Their punishment came suddenly on them. And if instead they had been grateful to God, we would have showered them with blessings. But they denied my messengers and scripture, so we punished them for their evil deeds. In this way we send you a warning, so you may reflect and take heed. Do the people of Mecca and the surrounding areas feel secure? Our punishment won't come. Take them at night while they sleep, or by day while they play. Do they doubt it'll descend on them? Do they feel safe from God's plans of punishment? Only the losers feel safe in such a way. Is it not obvious to those on the land that if we wish, we can punish them too for going astray, and ensure that they become deaf to the Qur'an, as they wrong themselves persistently.
If we wished we could seal their hearts from ever accepting faith, evil actions pollute their hearts immeasurably. And we've told you, prophet, of such people who rejected the signs and miracles God sent, and they would not believe in what they had already rejected. They do not keep their promises, so God sealed their hearts as they were defiant and unrepentant. After the messengers we have just told you of, we sent Moses with signs to Pharaoh and those with him, but they rejected what our messenger brought. See the end of those who caused corruption. Moses said to Pharaoh, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds, commanded to only speak truth, and I am told to tell you to let the children of Israel go with me, and I have brought a sign from God to you. Pharaoh said, Produce this sign that you have brought, if there is any truth in what you say. So Moses threw his staff, it became a snake, clear and plain, and then Moses pulled his hand from his cloak, and it was white for all to see. This was strange to Pharaoh, as he had known Moses since Moses was a child, and his skin colour was brown normally. Pharaoh's advisers said, Moses must be a learned sorcerer. He wishes to remove you from the land. Pharaoh asked, What do you suggest I do? They said, Summon every sorcerer under your command. Send word to all the cities and tell them to come. Delay Moses and Aaron here a while, make them stay. And when the sorcerers came, they asked, what will the reward be if we beat Moses on festival day? Pharaoh told them, You will join my inner circle. So they met with Moses and they challenged him, saying, Moses, shall we throw first or shall you? He said, Throw. And they threw down their staffs which seemed to wriggle as snake-like things. But we told Moses to throw his staff, and when he did it swallowed up their trickery, and the sorcerers were defeated. God's truth was confirmed, and the sorcerers fell to their knees, saying, Now we believe in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Moses and Aaron indeed. But Pharaoh said, How dare you believe in them before you have been given permission by me? I am now sure that you and Moses are conspiring together to remove people from this city. Soon you'll know the punishment I'll give you. I will cut off your alternate hands and feet, and I will ensure you are all crucified. But they simply replied, And that is how we'll die, but we'll be restored to return to the Lord. Your only problem with us is that we believe the signs from God sent through Moses that we saw. And then they prayed, Lord, make us patient and devoted. Let us die in submission to you. The sorcerers sincerely repented all they had done. They saw God's signs and knew they were true. The advisers of Pharaoh said to him, Will you leave Moses free in the land to spread corruption, leaving him to forsake our gods for Moses' God? Surely he will cause great disruption. Pharaoh said, We shall take control of the children of Israel. We will kill all their male children again, and spare only their females for our use. We will have total power over them. Moses said to his people, Turn to God for help and be steadfast. All the earth belongs to the Lord. He gives control of it to whom he chooses, and for those mindful of him, the paradise lies in store. And the children of Israel said, Moses, we suffered long before your arrival, and it persists since your arrival too. Moses replied, God may well allow you to destroy your enemy Pharaoh, and give you power in the land to see how it will be run by you. And then we afflicted Pharaoh's people with famine and hunger so that they may take heed. And then, when we alleviated it and gave them good, they ungratefully said, We deserve this indeed. But all the hardship that came they blamed on Moses and the believers. They thought him an evil omen. But all that was coming was coming from God. Whatever good or bad befalls them originates from him. And while Moses persisted in calling Pharaoh's people to faith, they said, We will never believe in you regardless of how much you try to bewitch or bedazzle us with the signs and spells you do. And so we afflicted them with a flood, which broke into their houses, and made locusts eat their crops, and a swarm of frogs to infest their food supplies, and made blood run in their water. Each trial lasted a week, then stopped. 
These were all clear signs for them, but they were a truly arrogant people. They would not heed. Each time they were struck, they would ask Moses to pray to God, but their words were only lying deceit. They'd say, Moses, pray to your Lord because of the covenant he has with you, and if he relieves us of this suffering, we will believe and let the children of Israel go with you too. But each time we stopped the plagues and gave them a fixed time in which to fulfill what they'd said, they broke their promise and continued to worship idols and spread corruption instead. So due to their persistent rejection of our signs, we meted out retribution as we drowned them in the sea. And then we made those who were oppressed heirs to the land we had blessed with plenty. God's promise to the children of Israel was kept, as they were patient as commanded to be. And we destroyed all that Pharaoh and his people built, and all they'd planted of vines and trees. We took the children of Israel across the sea. They found a people worshipping idols, consumed by idolatry. And they said, Moses, make a god for us like theirs to worship. Moses said, You're an ignorant people indeed. What these people do is something they've invented, and for what they do they are doomed. God has favoured you over all people. Why should I wish for any other than God for you? Remember, children of Israel, how we saved you from Pharaoh's people, who afflicted you dreadfully, killing your male children and using your women. Indeed, from your Lord this was a mighty ordeal. When we sent Moses thirty days of solitude and fasting in the month of Duhul Kadar indeed, and then he completed ten more from the month of Duhul Hajj, leaving Aaron in charge as his deputy. Before he left he told Aaron, Take my place amongst our people, make sure you act on what is right, do not follow those who spread corruption. And then we spoke to Moses at the appointed time. This is the time we promised Moses that we would speak to him directly, not through a dream or through an angel, without any type of intermediary. And when we spoke, he heard us, from every direction at the same time, and he said, Lord, show me to yourself so I may gaze upon you. God said, Moses, you do not have the power to see me in this world. It is not something you'll be able to do. But look at that mountain. Look at the tallest mountain you can see. I will reveal myself to that mountain, and if it, mighty as it is, can gaze on me, you too may also gaze on me. And when God revealed himself to the mountain, it crumbled, and Moses immediately passed out. And when he recovered, Moses said, Glory be to you, O Lord. I am repentant and the first to believe. I will be devout. God said to Moses, I have favoured you over other people by giving you my message and speaking to you. So take what I have given and give thanks, for my bounty you must be grateful. We gave Moses the tablets, and on them we made all matters in religion clear and explained. And we said, Hold firm to what I have given you. Follow the clear course that lead to the path that's straight. I will show you the evil ones who transgress. They are of those destined for hell, those who ignored my signs and proofs, those who acted arrogantly without right as well. I will turn such people from my messengers and signs, so even if they see every sign, they will not believe, and they will not take the way of guidance, even when by them it is clearly seen. But if they see the way of ignorance, misguidance and loss, they will head for it. This is because they denied our signs and paid them no heed thinking nothing would come of it. Those who disbelieve will see, their deeds will have no value at the meeting in the next life. Why should they get other than what they have done, when they have simply spread corruption and strife? While Moses was away, his people erred. They worshipped a shape they had fashioned from the jewellery they had or found. They melted it and formed something that looked like a calf and when the wind blew through it, it seemed to make a deep, lowing sound. Did they not realise that it could not speak or guide them in any way? Yet still they took it as an object to worship. How evil were the actions of those who went astray! And when they realised how foolish they had been, and that they had erred from the straight path and the truth, they said, 
Lord, we will be of the losers if you do not have mercy and forgive. We seek mercy and forgiveness from you. When Moses saw what his people had done, he said, You have done something terribly evil while I was away. Are you so keen to bring the punishment down and for God to bring forward your judgment for going astray? He threw down the tablets and pulled his brother Aaron toward him by grabbing his beard and hair. And Aaron said, Son of my mother, these people overpowered me, they almost killed me, I swear, because I opposed the idolatry they sought, so do not give them reason to be pleased by humiliating me, do not count me amongst the evil ones. So Moses prayed to God, Lord, forgive my brother and I, have mercy, you are the most merciful of the merciful ones. Those who worship the calf and their followers have punishment due, they will be humiliated in this life and they will be marked for abasement in the hereafter, too. This is how God punishes those who invent false things and lies. But God is forgiving towards those who repent bad deeds. God has mercy on them. If they are sincere, abstain from repeating those sins. Such are those who truly believe. When Moses' anger passed, he picked up the tablets. Guidance and mercy for believers from God was written on them. And Moses prayed with seventy of his people, and all but Moses were seized by an earthquake, a mighty trembling. Moses prayed, Lord, if you had so wished, you could have destroyed them long before, and you could have easily destroyed me too, Lord, for what the ignorant have done, will you destroy us all? This is a trial from you. Through this you will guide who you wish and allow others to stray. You are our protector. Forgive us. Have mercy on us. You are the best of those who forgive in every way. Grant us good in this world and in the life to come. We turn to you, Lord. You are mighty and forgiving. And God said, I bring punishment on whoever I will, but in this world my mercy embraces and covers all things. And Iblis thought he could take this as an opportunity to have God's mercy, saying, I am of creation too. But God said, my mercy is for those conscious of God who pay alms and believes in my signs as true. Those who follow the prophet who cannot read nor write, as described in the Torah that is with them, and the gospel that Jesus brought. My prophet who enjoins what's right and forbids them bad things. He relieves them of the hardship of the things they used to bear. So those that honor and follow him, believe in him and follow the Quran he was sent with, they are the ones who are succeeding. Say, Prophet. People, I am a messenger of God to all of you, sent from he who controls the heaven and earth. There is no God but him. He gives life and he gives death, and to him is the return at the rebirth. Believe in God and me, his messenger, the prophet who could not read or write, who believes in God and his words, and follow me, so that you might find guidance through God's commands, ensure they are observed. And among the people of Moses is a group who guide by the truth and who are just in their decrees. We divided that group up, we split into twelve distinct communities. And when his people asked Moses for water while they were in the wilderness, we told him to strike a rock with his staff, and twelve springs of water gushed out to ease their thirst and distress. Each tribe knew which spring was allotted, and we gave them shade and sent manna and quails to them, saying, Eat of the good things we have provided for you. And in what followed they did not wrong us, they wronged themselves. When they were told, Enter the town of Jerusalem, and eat of the good things you find in there, and say, Exonerate us, Lord, and enter the town humbly. We will forgive the sinners and increase the reward of the good who are sincere. But the wrongdoers changed the words we had told them, and used another word instead. And so we sent a punishment down on them from heaven for their wrongdoing, and insolence they said. Prophet, Ask the Jews about those who fished and broke the Sabbath in the city that was by the sea, and how the fish never appeared on weekdays, only on the Sabbath. Thus we tested them, and they acted disobediently. 
and so the town became disunited. Some said they would fish on the Sabbath, and some said it was prohibited, and some abstained from taking a position and remained neutral on the matter instead. And those who abstained turned to those who prohibited the fishing and asked, Why do you preach that God will destroy these people, or at least punish them or take them to task? They replied, So that we will not be blamed by God for remaining silent, and so those who fish may take heed. But those who fished on the Sabbath ignored their warning, and for their disobedience they were punished severely. God saved those who forbade the evil, but when the wrongdoers persisted in what they were forbidden to do, we said to them, Be like apes and be despised, and God said he would send people against them until the day of resurrection too. Your Lord is swift in punishment, but he is also merciful and forgiving. He is the Almighty, the Powerful One, the Creator of all and in charge of everything. And then we divided the children of Israel into different communities, on different paths of the earth indeed. Some acted righteously, and some do not, and to some we gave blessings, some misfortune, so they may refrain from their evil deeds. And they were succeeded by generations who ignored parts of the scripture they inherited. They preferred the world instead. And at any time they had the chance to make some low gain they should not have done. They declared, We will be forgiven, and the sinful action was repeated. They hoped they would be forgiven even if they committed the same sin and persisted in it. But the Torah that God gave them had no such condition or proviso in it. Were they not bound to keep the promise they made, to not tell lies about God and what he decreed? And they know and have studied the scripture well, so why do they make up lies about forgiveness when sinning persistently? For those who keep God in mind, the hereafter is better, for those who abstain from what God has forbidden. Do you not understand this point? Is that why you trade the hereafter for the earthly things you are given? But those who stay firm with scripture and keep up the prayer, they will be given great reward. And remind them too how we wrenched up a mountain and made it loom over them like a shadow. They feared that it would fall. We told them, Hold fast to what we have given you, and remember its contents to keep God's punishment from you. God knows and sees everything, so be mindful of him in all you do. Prophet, in the previous life, on the day of the covenant, God gathered all the souls that would be the children of Adam and made them bear witness indeed. And he said to them, Am I not your Lord? And they replied, Yes, we bear witness to this surely. So no person can say on the day of resurrection, we were not aware of God's oneness and power over us. And God made the angels bear witness to what was said, when every soul committed its pledge and trust. Another reason God reminds you of this covenant is so that on judgment day you will not say, It was our forefathers who invented partner gods. Will you destroy us because we simply followed their way? They will not be able to say such a thing as they themselves testified only God was Lord on the covenant day. And thus we have explained the story of the covenant to you, so you may leave off idolatry and disbelief, and now follow the right way. And prophet, tell the story of the scholar of the children of Israel, who we revealed our signs and our greatest name to. But he used it to pray to God against Moses, so we removed them from him, and then Satan seduced him too. If we had wished, we could have raised him high with this knowledge, but we let him follow his desires and quest for world things. Like a dog, whether you leave it be or drive it away, it moves with its tongue sticking out, hanging. Such is the way of such people. When we admonished him, he took no heed, and when left alone they did not understand. Such is the image of those who reject our signs, those who deny Muhammad and the Qur'an. Tell them histories of these men of past generations, so that they may consider things and reflect.
How evil is the example for those who deny our signs. They wrong themselves through their neglect. Whoever God guides is truly guided, and whoever God allows to stray will be a loser indeed. We have created many of mankind and jinn who are destined for hell, for following their desires and being disobedient to me. They have hearts they do not use to understand, and eyes they do not use to see, and ears they do not use to listen. They are like cattle, or even more lost. They are neglectful and act heedlessly. God has the most excellent ninety-nine names. Use them to call on him, and keep away from the evil ones, who only deny them or ascribe them a different meaning. Such people will be requited in the hereafter for what they do, and among the people are a group who act justly and guide people to the truth. But those who reject our messages are led to ruin step by step without realizing it. I may give them respite for now on earth, but my plan is sure. I will recompense them with punishment for it. Has it not occurred to the Meccans that Muhammad is not mad, but simply brings them a warning that is clear? Have they not reflected on all in the heavens and on the earth, and considered that their end may be near? Do they not consider all of creation and who created it? If they ignore the Quran, in what other revelation will they believe? No one can guide those God leaves to stray. He leaves them to wander on confused and blindly. Prophet, they ask you about the hour, saying, Tell us when it will come. Say, God alone knows of it. He alone can reveal its time. It's hidden from all else in the heavens and the earth. None but he has knowledge of it. And it will come upon you suddenly. But they still question you, Muhammad, as if you know when it will come. Tell them, most of mankind will not believe in it at all, and knowledge of its time is with God alone, the Almighty One. And tell them, Muhammad, I have no control over benefit or harm, even for myself. It is God alone who controls what happens to me. If I had hidden knowledge, I'd ensure I only had good and was never harmed, but I have no control over the unseen. I am simply one who has been sent to warn, and I bring this warning to you. And for the believers I bring them good tidings of paradise. In this way I bring them good news. It is God who created you all from a single soul, the soul of Adam, and made its mate Eve, so he'll find comfort with her. And when Adam lay with his wife, she grew a barely noticeable bump, and then later it grew larger, and when she was heavily pregnant they called on God, Give us a good child, so we may be grateful indeed. But when the child was born, they gave it a name whispered by Satan, not sanctioned by God. They acted erroneously. God is far above what the people of Mecca ascribe to him. How can they set up partners to the Almighty, when they themselves are created things who create nothing and cannot help them or help themselves indeed? If you believers call such ignorant ones to guidance, they will not follow you. It makes no difference whether you call or remain silent. They call on false created gods instead of what is true. Disbelievers, call upon your idols then, and let them respond if there is any truth in what you say. Do they not have feet to come listen to goodness and hands with which to give and take? Do they not have eyes with which they can see how you worship God? and ears to hear the prophet's call. Tell them, prophet, attack me, do not spare me, enlist these partner gods, gather whoever and all. My Lord is the one who protects me, he revealed the scripture, and he protects the righteous, and he is a protecting friend. But those you call on cannot help you in any way, or even help themselves, so why should I pay attention to them? Believers, if you call on the idols, trying to bring them to guidance, they will not hear anything said, nor can they see you because they are not alive. They, indeed, are dead. Muhammad, be forgiving and hold pardon, command what is right and ignore the ones who act foolishly. And if Satan should prompt you to do something wrong, seek refuge with God. 
He is all-hearing, all-knowing, and almighty. Those aware of God think of him when Satan prompts them to do something wrong, and immediately they can see clearly and distinguish the truth and ignore what Satan prompts. But followers of the devils among the disbelievers delve further in error and they do not desist. But they will come to know who was best to follow on the day they realize their chance of accepting faith was missed. And when you don't give them a new revelation, they say, why don't you just ask for one? Say, I simply repeat what is revealed to me from my Lord. It is he that sends the Quran's revelation. Through it he gives knowledge and guidance, and mercy to those who believe. So listen attentively with respect when the Quran is recited, for you to be given mercy. Prophet, remember your Lord within yourself with awe and humility, keeping your voice louder than a whisper, but do not speak too loudly. Do so in the morning and in the evening, and the beginning of the day and its end. Do not be one of those heedless of God's remembrance. Those conscious of God are not too proud to worship Him. They are the ones who wish to draw near to God. They celebrate His praise and bow down before Him.